good day students welcome to the class so in the previous classes we have discussed about the oscillators where we have seen various types of oscillators so in today's class we will be discussing about the crystal oscillator right in the previous class we have studied the wayne bridge oscillator now we are studying about the crystal oscillator <clears throat> so, in the advantages and disadvantages of the RC and LC oscillators, we came across one point where it was uh, talking about the stability of frequency. Okay, as the components are not stable, the tuning circuit components, the uh, inductor and capacitor are not stable. They depend on the temperature. They depend on the variation in the voltage. Right. Even in the RC, they depend on the temperature and variations in the voltages. That's why even the LC circuits and the RC circuits, both are not 100% stable. Otherwise, they are not uh, more stable that are that is undesirable for few frequencies, few applications. Okay, What are those applications where timing is a matter? Digital clocks, wrist watches, okay, timing circuits. Okay, I will just give you an example of ATM. Okay, it will just say timeout if you are not going to fill the uh, options within the duration of time. So that operation is depending on the time, length, isn't it? So in some applications, the time matters, otherwise, the time is very important. So how it is going to be depending on the stability of the frequency? Of course, we know P is equal to 1 over F. Otherwise, F is equal to 1 over T. Both are inversely proportional. So as the frequency is not stable, means naturally time cannot be stable. Otherwise, time is not synchronized or standard. Right. So that was the drawback observed in the tuned circuits, the tuned oscillators, that is LC oscillators and the RC oscillators. Though we have studied in the RC oscillators that they are going to give better stability compared to LC oscillators, but even that stability is not up to the mark for few time oriented. Otherwise, what we can say, the applications that completely depend on the clock signal. Okay. Clock signal, the frequency matters a lot for the time intervals. That is in the timing circuits only. <coughs> Right. For that, for this reason, we have to uh, use the stable type of oscillator that is called as the crystal oscillator. Right. So, not like the LC and RC, this is less stable. It is a very highly stable type of oscillator that is a crystal oscillator. Okay. So now we are studying about the crystal oscillator. Where we will study about the Piezo electric effect. Okay. Piezo electric effect. Okay. So, what is this piezo electric effect? Piezo electric effect is basically the property of a crystal. Okay. The crystals that exhibit the piezo electric effect are called as the piezo electric crystals. Okay. The crystals that exhibit the property of piezoelectric effect are called as the piezoelectric crystals. Okay. So these crystals are the type of salts that are uh, naturally available in nature, right? And few of them are Russian salt. Next. Tomline, tomline salt uh, crystal, these are the types of crystals. Russian salt, tomline, and finally the quartz. You might have definitely seen this. Somewhere you might have heard about the quartz. Okay. Minimum in your wristwatches you can see this quartz crystal. Right? Because it is a very vastly 
used type of material right <coughs> So before studying about the types of crystals, we will see what is basically the piezoelectric effect. Okay, what basically is the piezoelectric effect? We are talking about the crystals, right? So, if this crystal is applied any mechanical stress, okay, it is under any mechanical stress, okay, it is applied with any mechanical stress. What happens? It starts oscillating. Otherwise, it starts producing an voltage across the two ends. It starts producing an voltage across the two ends. This is called as the piezoelectric. Even the inverse happens. Conversely, when a crystal is applied with an AC signal, it starts vibrating. It starts distorting, otherwise vibrating. Clear? So mechanical to electrical, electrical to electron, mechanical um, energy <coughs> conversion can be observed in the piezoelectric effect. So basically, it is working as a transducer, right? That is converting one form of energy into another form. Mechanical stress. Uh, applied is going to be producing a voltage across the two ends right similarly the opposite of that happens when ac signal is applied to the crystal it starts vibrating right so this effect is called as piezoelectric effect so it is a vice versa otherwise a both way effect that is observed in the crystals right so what is piezoelectric effect so i'm writing that when crystal is applied any otherwise a mechanical strength otherwise stress applied mechanical strength Produces voltage across voltage across its ends. Okay. So when voltage is observed across the ends, right? And the opposite of this, when a crystal is applied when a crystal is applied with an AC voltage it starts Vibrating, it starts to vibrate. It starts to vibrate, otherwise it starts vibrating. Okay. Here, so this is the property observed in the piezoelectric effect. Okay. So how the crystals are going to behave here? When the crystal is applied with a mechanical strength, when it is um, uh, put some pressure. Okay. Only once, if the pressure is it continuously oscillates to produce a voltage across its ends of a fixed frequency. Okay? This is very important. Voltage across its ends of fixed frequency. Okay? So this is what the point is basically. Okay? This is what the point is basically that stability of the frequency. Stability of the frequency is provided here. So it is providing the voltage across the ends, of course, but what 
is more important here is it is going to provide the voltage across the two ends of fixed frequency. Okay, the frequency is going to be very stable over years and years. Here, frequency is going to be very stable over years and years. Here, the opposite also happens when the crystal is applied with an AC voltage, it starts vibrating. Mechanical pressure foot results in the voltage across its ends and voltage applied into its ends starts the crystal to vibrate. Okay. Here, this is called as piezoelectric effect and this is the basic principle of crystal oscillators. Basic principle of crystal oscillators. See, this is the question asked for one mark. Okay, name the principle on which crystal oscillators work and the principle is called what? Piezoelectric. Oscillators work on the principle of piezoelectric effect. Right? So now we see different types of crystals. So now we have seen the types of crystals here. The three types. The crystals. Easy, raise. 
poor mechanical strength, right? But it gives it highest feasibility. It means it is the most um, stable of all these three. Yeah. Next, this is the least amount of heat. Least isolated, but highest mechanical strength. Highest mechanical strength. Highest mechanical strength, which thermal energy. Okay. It is giving you the least piezoelectric effect but highest mechanical strength. Right? So it is suitable for designing any type of crystal, but it is going to give a less stability compared to the other. That's why they use quartz. Okay. So it is having both moderate. Okay, of course, the piezoelectric effect is less than Rochelle salt, but more than tourmaline. And mechanical strength is more than Rochelle salt, but definitely less than tourmaline. But still, because it is a uh, what we can say compromise between the two, we cannot use Rochelle because it is very uh, delicate. We cannot use tourmaline because it is having least piezoelectric effect and also it is a very costly among all the three. Okay, cost is also very high for the server. That's why quartz is used because it is uh, very easily available, less cost, it can give a uh, fair piezoelectric effect required and also mechanical strength is better than the Russian song. Okay, that's why quartz is preferred over these two. Here. Very 
even though it is using very high frequency applications. Right? Even though it is using very high frequency applications coming to the quads, using almost all the crystal oscillators very fastly used. <coughs> has piezoelectric charge greater than tomaline better than tomaline with respect to piezoelectric effect and has has better mechanical strength when compared to when compared to Okay. Comparatively having better mechanical strength compared to Rochelle soil. Okay, that's why it is using many applications.
represent the symbol for history. The crystal cut into the rectangular uh, shape is placed between the two parallel metal plates. Okay, this is placed between two parallel plates. So this is the symbol of crystal. Crystal symbol. Okay, so this is how a crystal will be connected in a circle. Right. The rectangular shape uh, crystal that is cut into rectangular shape for its operation in the oscillators is placed between two metal caps, otherwise two metal plates. Next. Here the crystal is going to exhibit a property of a tuned circuit itself, but it is a crystal. Okay. It is having a R L and a C inside. This is called as the mounting capacitor C L. Okay, this is R, this is L, this is C. So it is going to exhibit as a LCR tuned circuit. It is basically acting as a LCR tuned circuit itself. This is called as the electrical equivalent circuit. Electrical equivalent circuit of crystal. Electrical equivalent circuit of Crystal, right? <clears throat> Here, this is the symbol. It is basically available in the hexagonal prism shape, but it is cut into rectangular shape when it is used in the oscillators as a crystal. This is the symbol, crystal symbol. This is, and this is the electrical equivalent. That means how um, the crystal is going to exhibit the property. It is exhibiting the property of a tuned circuit having a R, L, and C internal. So this crystal is going to exhibit the property of a resistor, a property of an inductor, and a property of a capacitor to be low. That's why the electrical equivalent circuit is having R, L, and C all together. Okay, and an uh, additional C, which is called as the mounting capacitor, because the, the crystal present here is acting as a dielectric and the two metal plates are separated uh, here and it is placed between the two metal sheets, uh, metal plates. The unit together acts as a what? Capacitor itself. The unit itself is looking like the capacitor. That's why an additional capacitor is appearing in the liquid equivalent circuit called as the mounting capacitor. Mounting capacitors. This is the capacitor is offered by the crystal by its uh, natural otherwise inherent property. Resistance offered by the crystal, inductance offered by the crystal, all together R, L, uh, and C. Properties exhibited by the crystal, and uh, apart from that, a mounting capacitance is also exhibited. Here, now. So, this is symbol of crystal. And electrical equivalent circuit of crystal, or these two together are asked for three marks. Okay? This question together is asked for three marks, right? Where they will ask you to draw the symbol and electrical equivalent of a crystal. Draw the symbol and electrical equivalent of a crystal. So this is the symbol and this is the electrical equivalent of a crystal. Moving with the crystal oscillator. Crystal oscillator definitely comprises of a crystal connected in the circuit. So it appears similar to that of a Hadley oscillator or convex oscillator that will be having uh, the CE amplifier. So I am drawing the CE amplifier for the crystal oscillator now. RE, the CE, the 
carbon atom for the voltage divided by the bias. The coupling capacitor C1, CC1. Okay. <coughs> Here the free battery applied. This is the feedback part. Here RFC, A to C2, as it is always, also present in the RTA conflicts of state. The collector current passes through a complete master again. Applied can be frequency determining circuit, otherwise the big master. Here we connect the Followed by two capacitors connected on the other side of the circle. In the mass C1 and C. Downlink in the middle. Feedback is taken from this frequency determining circuit. Uh, actually, here it is not a frequency determining circuit because the frequency of the crystal is fixed, and the frequency of the crystal depends on the factors of the direction on uh, uh, in the shape of rectangular. It is cut the dimensions and also the thickness of the crystal. It depends on two factors. Okay. Here, so this is the circuit. Of course, this is R1. This is R2. This is the emitter, base, and collector. Okay. So this is the circuit of a crystal oscillator. Where on one of the arms of this uh, circuit, crystal is connected, and opposite to that, C1 and C2 resistor, two capacitors are connected. Right? Yeah. So basically, a CE amplifier is there. So what happens initially? The noise signal is there. There is no input signal applied. Right? There is only the feedback signal that is reaching the Base. So initially, one collector current, a very small amount of current, collector current passes when the uh, circuit is powered. Collector current moves here, charges the two capacitors T1 and C. Charges the two capacitors T1 and C. So I'm writing the working. Working also here. So what does the working say? When the circuit is powered, when the circuit is powered, the power means when it is started, when it has been applied to uh, signals, uh, otherwise when it is turned on, the collector current. Charges C1 and C2, the two capacitors C1 and C2 starts charging. Okay. Here, once C1 and C2 are fully or completely charged. Are completely charged. Now, what happens when they are completely charged? The voltage across C1 and C2 is applied to. 
the crystal. He is applying the crystal. Okay. Clear? 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 What is happening? The collector current, the small amount of current that is flowing through the, through the collector terminal, the collector current charges the C1 and C2. Once the C1 and C2 are charged, what happens? The voltage across the C1 and C2 is applied to the two ends of the terminals applied to the terminals of the crystal. Okay, the voltage across C1 and C2 is applied to the crystal terminals. Crystal terminals. Right? Now what happens? Once the voltage is applied, it starts vibrating. Okay, so what does the piezoelectric effect say? Once it is applied with some voltage and it starts vibrating, it continuously oscillates with a fixed frequency. So now, as the piston has started vibrating, the vibrating vibrations is going to produce the voltage across the piston. Okay, clear? Yeah. That voltage is applied to the piston once it has started vibrating. The vibration of the crystal is resulting into what? The voltage across the two terminals of the crystal. And now that voltage is the applied voltage to the capacitors. Okay. Now the crystal oscillations. The crystal oscillations are applied. Across C1 and C2 are available frequency are available at C1 and C2. Oscillations are now available at at C1 and C2. Okay. Clear? C1 and C2. Otherwise, the voltage. Across C1 and C2 are out of phase, out of phase by they are out of phase by 180 degree. Okay, out of phase by 180 degree. Okay, so if the uh, voltage across the C1 is like this. The voltage across C2 is going to be like this. The exactly inverted form of the voltage available at C1. Okay. <clears throat> the voltage across C2 is the feedback voltage. Is the feedback voltage. Here. Yeah. So the voltage across C2 is the feedback voltage that is 180 degree phase reversal. Another 180 degree phase reversal is given by the C A amplifier. So total 0 degree or 360 degree is obtained. Okay. That satisfies the condition of bar frequency. Here, once the signal is um, applied to the capacitors from the collector current, the capacitor starts charging. The voltage is applied to the crystal. Once the crystal starts vibrating, it continuously supplies the voltage to the capacitor C1 and C2. Okay. As the C1 and C2 are receiving the oscillations of the crystal, the oscillations are available at the C1 and C2. And the oscillations across the C2 are applied to the amplifier circuit again, to the CE amplifier back. Where that signal already inverted signal, okay? Already inverted, quality inverted signal is applied to the base terminal, where the CE amplifier will further invert it to produce a zero phase shift signal, otherwise a in phase signal, right? So that satisfies the first bar process, right? So this is the working here. And also we will discuss about the other criteria. Okay, so we have discussed about the working here that the electric current charges the capacitors, capacitors uh, voltage across is applied to the two terminals of the, the ends of the crystal. Once the crystal starts vibrating, it uh, provides the uh, oscillations.
to C1 and C2 that are relatively out of phase. Okay, if you, if this is in phase, this is going to be out of phase by magnetic That out of phase by magnetic degree signal is applied to the CM filter, where the CM filter further provides another magnetic degree phase difference to give a total of phase difference of 360 degree or 0 degree. This satisfies the first partial criteria. So this is about the working thing here. Now we will see about the other condition of bar closing. First condition, positive feedback is done. We are getting positive feedback, 180 plus 180 total, 360 degree. Phase difference is um, applied to the crystal oscillator. Now, the other condition is that A beta root B is equal to 1. To obtain this, the crystal oscillator has to be designed with a feedback factor of C1 by C2 and a gain of C2 by C1. Okay. Here it is just like that of a always oscillator. So the crystal has to be designed with these um, parameters as C1 and C2, uh, as beta and C2 by C1 as A, and the product of these two has to be 1. Here. Now, about the frequency, as we have, we have uh, as I have already told you that the frequency here for the crystal oscillator is not depending on any individual component or selection of the component. It is completely depending on one material called as crystal. Okay. So for the crystal, the frequency is determined by constant k divided by k, where k is the dimensions. Dimensions of crystal. Dimensions of crystal means so what I have told you it is basically available in the hexagonal prism shape where it will be molded otherwise it is um, cut into the shape of a rectangle. Okay, rectangular shape it is cut into and the dimension of that rectangular shape of the crystal determines the value of A and where P is the thickness thickness of Crystal. Okay, here crystal means the rectangular shape. Okay, the rectangular shape. Okay, rectangular. Basically, the rectangular. Here I am saying the crystal, dimensions of the crystal, and thickness of the crystal are the same, but basically it is dimension of the rectangular shape of the crystal and thickness of the rectangular. That is how the crystal is cut. Right. So this is about the working of the crystal oscillator. All these uh, things you have to remember here. Next. Variations. 
independent of relations in terms of voltage temperature etc so basically it is temperature independent that's why it is stable this we have already discussed okay so these are few advantages moving to the disadvantages <clears throat> desired frequency okay about the disadvantages obtaining the desired frequency is not that easy here okay just think about the uh, rc oscillator sudarman the lc oscillator individual values of capacitor and inductor or resistor changed is going to simply change the value of this but here to obtain the desired frequency completely depends on what the crystal clear so the difficult to obtain desired frequency why as it completely depends on the crystal if you want exact frequency you have to select the crystal near to that frequency okay so this also serves as an advantage here you can see it as advantage frequency change simply replace crystal that's it replace crystal okay if you want a frequency change simply replace the crystal right difficult to obtain desired frequency as the crystals are when the desired frequency is uh, required we want to select the frequency based on k by t where it depends on the dimensions and the uh, thickness where shaping it into that precise uh, dimension the precision becomes a very important here and it becomes a very challenging thing because cutting it into that exact dimension and with that exact thickness becomes a very uh, tough job right because the crystal is very delicate it easily breaks that is the disadvantage okay that is the disadvantage of the crystal where desired frequency is that not that easily obtained because desired frequency depends on the dimension and thickness of the crystal where selecting the dimension and the thickness of the crystal depends on cutting the crystal and crystal is a delicate material so it is not that easy to cut the crystal into that exact dimension and thickness so this serves as a disadvantage moving to the applications moving to the applications as a crystal it is also a very delicate material so it is basically not preferred for high power applications so it is limited its use is limited to low power applications now moving to the applications where all it is, where all it is used it is very widely used in oscillators very widely used in oscillators and clock circuitry used in communication communication transmitter transmitter and communication receiver it is used in communication transmitter and receiver also used in mobile mobile transmitter and receiver is used in mobile transmitter and receiver right it is used in digital clocks digital clocks this watches digital or wrist watches otherwise electronic wrist watches it is used apart from that it is also used in microwave applications okay microwave oven ovens 
Microwave, okay, up to some frequency values. Okay, the frequency that is suitable for it. Okay, so these are all the applications. Communication transmitter, communication receiver, mobile transmitter receiver, digital clocks, wrist watches, microwave ovens. Okay, where also it, it can be used in the frequency generation of the microwave signals, otherwise, also in the timing circuit is used in the microwave ovens. Okay, so these are the advantages. Uh, sorry, applications of the crystal. So we have discussed all about crystals in today's class, starting from the what are what is the principle of crystal oscillator that is piezoelectric effect, where piezoelectric effect says when a mechanical pressure, otherwise a mechanical uh, strength is applied across the two ends of the uh, across the crystal, it starts vibrating to produce a um, fixed value voltage across its two ends. Similarly, when voltage is applied, it starts vibrating and it starts oscillating. Clear? This is the piezoelectric effect. The piezoelectric effect exhibited by crystals are called as piezoelectric crystals. Examples we have taken as Rochelle, salt, tourmaline, and Quartz, okay. So about the uh, Rochelle, what was the drawback? Was mechanical strength. It gives the maximum piezoelectric effect, but a very least mechanical strength. Moving to the tourmaline, it is a very strong type of crystal, but exhibits a very least piezoelectric effect, right? Even though these two uh, materials are also having their own applications in few fields, right? Tourmaline is used for very high frequency. Uh, applications and uh, its cost is also the highest among the three. About the Rochelle used in microphones and loudspeakers. Here, <clears throat> also used in headphones and the Rochelle's one. Moving to the quartz, it is a compromise between the Rochelle and the tourmaline we have seen. It is used in almost all the digital circuits for the clocking signals. It is used widely used in the oscillators and timing circuits. Quartz and why quartz is preferred over Rochelle and tourmaline is that the piezoelectric effect produced by the Rochelle it is not that much but it is better than tourmaline and the mechanical strength is not least as that of the Rochelle but definitely less than the tourmaline. Okay, so it is a compromise between the two. It is having a moderate piezoelectric effect and also a um, moderate otherwise a fair mechanical strength such that this uh, material can be used in the oscillators right that's why quartz is preferred and about the shape and all we have seen that it is a hexagonal prism shape where for the operation for the uh, uh, usage of crystal in the oscillators it is cut into a rectangle shape okay so uh, it is cut into the rectangular shape and used in the oscillators where when it is cut in the rectangular shape the uh, system is placed between the two metal plates where it is alone acting as a capacitor that property we have seen in the symbol and electrical equivalent of the circuit where the electrical equivalent of the crystal was comprising of resistor capacitor and inductor three together along with a parallel capacitor connected across them, right? So here, the parallel capacitor was called as the mounting capacitor because the unit of the crystal placed between the two parallel plates itself is acting like a capacitor, right? That's why we can observe a series as well as a parallel capacitor. Two capacitors, one inductor and one resistor in the electrical equivalent of the crystal. I have told you that this symbol and electrical equivalent of the crystal is asking for three marks in the exams. <clears throat> right? So this is about the crystal structure and the electrical equivalent. Then we studied the oscillator, crystal oscillator, where it is similar to that of a hardly or called convex oscillator. But in the place of um, inductor, in the convex oscillator, it is more near to the convex oscillator, where it is having two capacitors. And opposite in the opposite arm, there was a inductor. So just that inductor is replaced by a crystal in the crystal oscillator. Here coming to the operation, capacitors are charged by the uh, collector current. When the capacitors are fully charged, the voltage is applied to the two ends of the crystal, right? 
when the crystal is applied to the voltage, it starts vibrating, and that vibration produces an voltage, and the oscillations appear across the C1 and C2. The oscillations appear across the C1 and C2 as a as having 180 degree phase reversal. Okay, C2 is applied back to the feed, uh, uh, CE amplifier as a feedback voltage with 180 degree phase difference, and the CE amplifier itself gives a 180 degree phase difference. So the overall oscillator produces an 360 degree phase differences and satisfies the bar cousins right right also uh, the other condition of bar cousin that is a beta is equal to 1 kq obtained by designing the value of a is equal to c2 by c1 and b is equal to c1 by c2 having the total uh, otherwise the loop again a beta is equal to 1 it has to be designed in such way coming to the frequency we have also seen that it depends on the k by p dimensions and thickness of the rectangle shape of the crystal that is cut right so that is depending on that so this crystal is not easily modified the desired frequencies cannot be obtained because the frequency completely depends on what the dimension of the crystal so for the crystal if you want different frequencies simply you can replace the crystal to get the other frequency okay so we have also seen the advantages and disadvantages where it, it says it is simple it is less cost it is giving more stability uh, different frequencies simply re uh, replace the crystal and all, right? all these are advantages. Coming to the disadvantage, getting the precise value otherwise the desired frequency is a difficult task. Because cutting the uh, device into that particular um, dimension to get that particular frequency becomes quite difficult here. here? So these are the uh, disadvantages and we have discussed the advantages also. Applications used in transmitters and receivers in the communication system. It may be radio communication or any other communication. And also in the mobiles, receiver and transmitter, it is used. Apart from that, it is used in digital clocks. It is used in wristwatches. You can observe in the wristwatches not with calls. Okay, clear? Also used in many timing circuits, used in clock generating circuits, used in microcontrollers, it is used as a uh, oscillating frequency of a microcontroller is 0 by then also. Here, it is used, uh, crystal is used across the clock input of the microcontroller also. Micro, uh, this uh, crystals are having many applications in the timing circuits and the oscillators, basically. Right? So, this is all about crystals. In the next class, we will be studying about non sinusoidal oscillators. Non-sinusoidal oscillators means the oscillators that generate square wave, rectangular wave, any wave that is not sinusoidal, rectangular, triangular, square wave, sawtooth. So here we will be studying about the triple five IC. IC triple five. That is capable of generating <coughs> square waves and rectangular waves. Right. So about this triple five in detail, the pin diagram, the internal operation, the operation of each pin and all. We will see in the next class about the non-sinusoidal uh, oscillators precisely where we will be studying about the triple five. Okay, I see triple five, right? That is used in the multi vibrator here. Okay. So in today's class, we have completely discussed about the crystal oscillator. We do not find any numerical on the crystal oscillator because the frequency is depending only on the dimensions of the uh, rectangle and thickness. Of course, the chapter is having four types of numericals frequency of RT oscillator, frequency of Colbert's oscillator, frequency of RC phase shift, and the frequency of AMH oscillator. Depending on these four formulae, numericals for five marks will be definitely asked in the final exams, right? So these uh, numericals are very important where the frequency of a Hartley oscillator is 1 divided by 2 pi under root L equivalent C, where L equivalent is L1 plus L2. This Colbert's uh, oscillator, F is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi under root L C equivalent, where C equivalent is C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. RC phase shift, F is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi RC under root 6. Okay, Wayne bridge oscillator 1 divided by 2 by RC. So, depending on this formula, we have performed many numericals. So, these are very important for exam point of view. Though crystal oscillator is not having any 
numericals based on phi um, mark numericals on the crystal oscillator. Like the crystal oscillator, uh, questions will be asked based, based on the piezoelectric effect and also electrical equivalent and symbol of the crystal oscillator. Also, the circuit and circuit of the crystal oscillator can also be asked. Right? So this is all about today's class students. Thank you.